Let me ask you something. What number are you seeing next to your email inbox right now? How does that number make you feel? Overwhelmed? Then it's time to learn about Inbox Zero, a simple but powerful method that can turn your email inbox from a place you dread and avoid into a helpful companion for meeting all your commitments without any delay. As the name suggests, the idea of Inbox Zero is to regularly clean your inbox down to zero unprocessed messages so that you minimize the risk of missing anything important that comes up. And this has two facets, cleanup and overload prevention. If you're one of many people whose inbox is filled with over a thousand or even more than 10,000 unprocessed messages, here's how I recommend you take care of it. First, find every email that is over a month old and unread. In Gmail, all you have to do is type is colon unread in the Gmail search bar and select older than a month under the drop down menu item named anytime. Select every email and mark it red. Step two is to archive every email in this selection. The assumption here is that everything you haven't opened and is over a month old is likely not important enough or it's expired anyway. But you can pick a different time frame if you're more comfortable with that. After performing these steps, your inbox should look a lot less obese already. And we only have one month left of emails to tackle. With what's left, I recommend combing through it manually and asking yourself the following questions for each email. Do I need to respond to it? If yes, you don't have to do that right away. Just draft a response. Type one letter in there. That's all you need for Gmail to save it as a draft. That way you have a reminder for yourself of emails you want to finish and send out. Do I need to read the email? If yes, I recommend forwarding it to your reading app. And on my channel, I have videos that show how you can do this for multiple very commonly used to do apps like Todoist, TickTick, Asana, Trello, and many others. If you cannot or don't want to use one of these apps, you can also create a label named read and apply it to any email that still needs to be read. If you're so confident in a regular publication that you're sure that you'll wanna read it every single time, like your favorite newsletter, you can also use Gmail filters to automatically apply a tag like that. I also have an example automation with Todoist linked in the description. Or do you need to save it as reference material? If yes, I recommend forwarding those emails to your reference app as a piece of non-actionable information or starring the email to indicate within the email client that they contain useful or important information. You should be able to categorize the vast majority of your emails into one of those three buckets. And once you've done that, go ahead and archive every single one of them. And for any email you deem to be pure trash, just delete it. One thing to keep in mind as you go through this cleanup process is to do it mindfully. You should feel good after having done it. And from there on out, you should embrace it as a process. Because the more consistently you'll do it, the less overwhelming it will be. Find the right cleanup rhythm based on the volume and urgency of your incoming email. For me right now, once, maybe twice a day on busier days works fine. But if you're in a high communications volume role like customer support or sales, you may need to do it more often. I was in sales for years and I had a 90 minute interval in which I made sure that my inbox was clean so that any customers I was speaking to would get a quick and proper response. On the other hand, if you email very little, you may get by with just once a week. It's really personal. Now let's talk about overload prevention. If you're like most people, your inbox will contain tons of spammy messages from companies trying to sell you something that you couldn't care less about. Unfortunately, many e-commerce marketing teams treat that one order you made in 2016 as a permanent consent for you to keep on receiving their newsletter and special discounts and offers. However, any new emails that do come in should also have an unsubscribe link in the footer somewhere. They try to hide it, but they are legally obliged to have it in there. Here's the one from my newsletter, for example. The rule for overload prevention is simple. If you see something you don't want to read, don't just delete it. 
take those few extra seconds to see if you are at risk of receiving more of these kinds of things you don't want. And if you are, find the unsubscribe link and click it. Investing those few extra seconds really helps you build momentum towards a consistently clean inbox. There are also paid services you can use to unsubscribe in bulk, like clean.email, CleanFox and Maelstrom. A special shout out also goes to the Mine app, which goes a step further by enabling you to send GDPR conforming data erasure requests to any companies that they've deemed hold your data based on your email address. However, this goes further than just unsubscribing, so be careful with it. You will also delete any account or order history or any other data that that company may have on you by submitting such a request. Getting to Inbox Zero for the first time is a daunting task. You may not get there in one day. You may slip up from time to time, and all of that is okay, because I promise you, once you've gotten there for the first time, you'll feel a sense of clarity that will have you hunting for more. At the same time, remember that it's simple. I've laid out a framework here that anybody can follow, and it doesn't require advanced, complicated, multiple inbox rules or filters and automations, although they can help from time to time. For most people, in my opinion, they're nothing more than a band-aid. In my opinion, you should face what's coming your way, make decisions on it consistently by cleaning up and preventing overloads. You'll get your inbox health way up there and actually look forward to seeing what kind of input has come your way today. Share your experiences with Inbox Zero in the comments. And once you've got your email under control, I recommend checking out my other video on Inbox Zero where you can learn about inboxes you may not even realize you have that you can apply the same principles to.